Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by today. This is Sandy from Color Creatively, and I'm working with gel pens this month and mandalas. Um, I will be doing uh, gel pens on some other pictures too, not just all mandalas this month, but it is Mandala Madness Month, and so here we go. Uh, this is, book is by Jason Hamilton, and this is Art of Mandala 2. So we had already in part one worked on this picture here and it's i uh, hope you uh, you just can't see the lightness of my violet all these different violet colors in here it just comes across on the camera too dark i don't know if that helps anyway this whole flower center flower is going to be violet and this is going to be our crayola crayon as you can see i'm working with it there and we're going to turn this into a paint so here we go. Um, uh, first, let's finish this one because I had started it and not finished it. And then we're going to do the gel pen on our flower. Okay, I'm taking the dark green, I'm doing a green color, just Crayola crayons. Let me zoom in before I forget. That was my big thing that I need to do all the time is zoom in. Okay. And... Here we go. Okay. Crayola crayons. I took green, and this one is called Granny Smith Apple. If you have Crayola, you have those colors. Okay. Um, I'm coloring in with them. Just, I'm using the dark and light. Um, I'm not going to do any additional shading or detailing. I am just doing a simple mandala with gel pens and these crayons that you can do too. Okay. And I'm going to color on here. Now, all the paper is different. The ones that I were, was coloring on, the other paper, I should say, that I was coloring on for the other mandala I did, was so much smoother, the crayon went down very smoothly and it was easy to turn it into paint. This one I have to work at it a little bit more. So just know that different paper is going to react differently and sometimes you just need to be a little more diligent and patient and take a little more time. But I'm going to do this for those that didn't see video on part one so that you'll see how I did this. This gives it a very nice matte finish. It's not oily. It's not waxy. You can take your gel pen and go over this if you wanted to. It's up to you. You can use pencil over it. So it's quite versatile. Just a Crayola crayon. That's it. Nothing expensive. Nothing. Um, I show you my pack. I got the 96 pack. They weren't very, it's falling apart. I've got tape on the box and a rubber band. The, my box is falling apart, but the 96 Crayolas are wonderful. They have all kinds of beautiful colors in there to choose from, and they're all different. Okay, we'll do this and then we'll work on our flowers some more. Oh, how have you guys been? I've had a rough three days since I posted before. I made videos before. I've had a touch of the flu and with cold chills and fever. And I, today I still have it, but I'm feeling much, much better. So I wanted to get out another video for everyone while I was feeling fairly well because... I guess I learned a lesson. The moral of the story is you just never know from one day to the next uh, what can happen or how you're going to feel. So don't postpone things. Do them while you can. Okay, I'm using Zestit non-toxic orange oil blending sponge and pencil blend, Zestit pencil blend that's in here on the sponge. So it's not messy. It's not dripping. Uh, there's no liquid. You can get zested in non-tox, uh, non, I mean, non-fragrance. No fragrance, I guess. 
Uh, this is the orange oil fragrance, but it works just as well, the one that has no fragrance. And um, if you have trouble finding it in the United States, you can order it from jacksonart.com, where I got mine. Okay, I have to give that little plug every time I get on here because a lot of people ask the same question and they haven't heard my previous video. So uh, you just dip it in, get your, I'm using a paper stump. You could use a paintbrush. I'm not into that. I find that being able to move the pigment with the paper stump works much better for me. Um, these are just paper stumps you can buy on Amazon.com or you can get them at any craft store that sells craft items. They're inexpensive and they last a long time. Okay, did you see how that's melting, melting the wax, literally melting it, and I can push the pigment into the uh, tooth of the paper. Now, if you want to make layers over this, you can with pencil or other crayon or whatever, and it does not wreck the tooth of the paper. That's the beauty of this, is that a lot of times if you burnish, then you've destroyed the tooth of the paper and you are limited as to how many layers or uh, what you can put over uh, something. Burnishing um, will destroy the tooth of the paper, but any kind of solvent will not. And this is a very beautiful orange oil fragrance. But like I said, you if you don't if fragrance bothers you, get the odorless one. It's just the same, and it's not toxic. It's made in the UK, and that's why it's a little hard to get a hold of it here. Now, on Amazon, they had a zested dip pen solution. Do not buy that one. That one is for fountain pens with permanent India ink. And I do not know if that is non-toxic. And I do not know if that would work. But this is pencil blend. You want it for colored pencils. And then you can use it on any wax-based or oil-based pencils. You don't have to um, have just wax-based pencils. You can use it on the oil-based also. Any colored pencil, basically. Okay. Now this one's taking me a little longer. I have to use a little more zested because the paper is different than the other paper I used on my other video. So if you, I just, I have to be patient because I want it to go smoother and quicker. And although it's doing quite well here also, just that every paper has its own obtooth, its own absorbency. And if you get a speck of crayon, use a brush. This is from the dollar store. It's a makeup brush. I just swish off crumbs. If you use your fingers, sometimes things smear, especially with crayons. So, and this paper absorbs a lot of the zested. So just work with the paper that you have. I love these books by Jason Hamilton. I think they're awesome. And when I have big spaces like this, I like to do this technique personally. And yet I love my gel pen, but a space like this around the whole mandala would eat up a lot of gel pens and a lot of refills. So I decided to use another medium, but yet it's going to accentuate my shiny glitter flower in the middle. My main focus will be this flower and it should help it stand apart because this is a matte finish. It's not going to be glittery. If you want to make it glittery, you can. That's up to you. 
but I want this to be the glitter gel pen to be the focal point. And I'm hoping it is. We'll see when we get done here if it is or not, okay? Okay, now if you don't get enough of these color Crayola on here, you're going to have trouble blending. But you don't want it thick on there either. So just make sure you cover your space good, but you don't have to worry about every white speck because this is going to take care of the white specks by pushing the pigment into the tooth of the paper. And this tub, Zested, is wonderful with colored pencils of all types if you want to blend with them, not just crayons. If you own Caran uh water-soluble crayons, this will work with them also. It's just a great technique, and I enjoy using Crayolas. Okay. So as you can see, we've got our matte finish going. That should be our canvas in the back. And let's start with the gel pen. I thought I'd introduce a lighter color here. Well, I've got it there, the gold. And I think I'm going to put it even on the back flower here. Because I want to, although I say liven up the colors, they are not that dark. And I'm sort of disappointed that you can't see that on camera. They're ju I just chose a variety of violet colors because I think about a violet when I saw this. At uh, first, I thought it was all leaves, and I said, no, I'm going to turn this into a flower. And then I thought of uh, violets growing in, a, in my mother-in-law's kitchen, so I decided to use violet. But I'm going to put some yellowish gold in here. It's a yellow color, a dark yellow or golded golden yellow. I want to get the centers of these. And we're going to see how this turns out too. Okay. These gel pens are from Chromatech. They're glitter gel pens. And I have used some in here from Arteza gel pens, in case those of you want to know. But you do not have to use the same brand of pen or pencil or anything that I do. You can buy your own and use the same principle to do your own page, picture. Okay. I might be making a mistake here with this yellow. I might have wanted to do that, all these violet colors, but it is what it is now because I've already put it down. So we'll see how it comes out. Life is an experiment many times and especially coloring. I hope you're having a great day today, and this is Sunday, starting of a new week coming up here. The month of January is flying by. Uh, due to my sickness, I wasn't able to color anything off camera, and I do a lot of coloring off camera each month for my video showing completed pic pictures, so I'm hoping to maybe tomorrow to start doing that again. I'm I'm still under the weather, but I am better. And uh, I think I'm running just a little bit of a fever. So as soon as I can, I want to get back to coloring some pictures off camera also that I can show at the end of the month. Okay. 
there we go there. Now let's try, I never know what color to use here next, all these, that they're all so similar. I mean, it, okay, I'm going to go with this lighter one here. This is a lighter violet color. You know, that is pretty small. Let me try to zoom in again. Okay, maybe that's better. I'm sorry, folks. i am got to learn how to zoom in here a little bit better. I'm going to go around here while I have the same color in my hand. He has some very detailed mandalas, uh, J ha Jason Hamilton, especially on this Art of Mandala too, but I really like that. It's a challenge to do, and they're beautiful. They come out very beautiful. Okay, I'm doing these little ones first, these front flowers, the bigger ones in the back I'll do later. I want to do these the same and then I'll going to decide which colors to put in the other ones and how to mix it up. Okay, there you go on that. So now let me go around here and do another color. And let me mark on my book here so I can see which colors which. I'm going to leave them open so we don't have to go back and forth shutting them down. Okay, I'm going to use the next lightest color here. And then this one I want to put on the edge of my flower also. And before I forget and do the wrong thing, I'm going to take the same pen and go on the edge. This is a much lighter, well this is lighter, we had a light one and now a little darker, but it's not a dark color. That's what I'm trying to say compared to the other ones that I've chosen. A couple, there's only one really dark one. Okay. Okay, let's go around here. This is just straight coloring. Actually, all of this is. Oops, I put it in the wrong spot. Mm, I'll go here. Now I'll come back and hide that with something else. And I'm talking and I'm not watching what I'm doing. 
So just whatever solvent you have. I do have a video on solvents telling you which is good, which is, um, I shouldn't say good, which is non-toxic and which are toxic. And also talk about the odor and the odorlessness of some and get you some solvent of your choice. I'm choosing to use Zestit, and I am going to order some more from Jackson Art, just because it's hard to find here, at least in my area. I'm pretty sure it is in the U.S. I've heard from other people it was, too. I'm going to have it on hand, and it blends, and it works on all medium and all kinds of paper and I just can't go wrong can't go wrong with that okay I did that okay let's see what the next color is we're going to use whoops that's not the right you know the grips on this just are not indicating the color of what I'm doing and it looks so dark here I know people so sorry but it's so pretty and real in person I'm going to do this next all these violet colors are gorgeous This is Sunday, and it's the day that we we have a, a grilled steak every Sunday. And my husband cooks it, and it comes out delicious. Usually we buy New York steak. Today we have ribeye. And we go to Costco. Those of you in the United States know that it's a discount warehouse type store membership store and the prices are very good and the quality is great here for their meats and so he'll grill us up some steak and make us a big salad for lunch and because I'm feeling better I'm going to be able to enjoy it which is great oh I didn't do the edge on the, the other color did I? I oh man I don't know see I'm still not with it I have to finish this flower, these flowers that are this color in the center. Okay, this is our focal image, the flowers, the sparkly glitter gel pen flowers. So it will stand out if we keep this background matte it will stand out as the focal image in the end here okay let me go back and do that other one okay let me do the edges here before i get them something wrong and different Oh, I'm off camera. I'm sorry. I've got to remember where I put my camera. Sorry, folks. I'm not the greatest person for videos. I'm learning and I'm trying my best. It's... <clears throat> Okay, 
I talked to a friend of mine that I haven't talked to in several months and visited with her, and um, this was before I got sick. So that was really nice, to get in touch with someone again that you've been out of touch with, but you value your friendship. So that was really a plus for me. And then I got sick, and I was glad I didn't expose anybody to the flu. I know some of you are going to say, why don't you get a flu shot? Well, I've studied what's in flu shots, and I am just not going to put that into my body. And there's no guarantee that the flu shot is going to be targeting the virus that's going around because they're guessing at the virus. Plus, there's a lot of very, very cancer-causing toxic agents in the flu shot. Let me tell you a quick story. My daughter-in-law's stepfather was the kind of person that always, always had a flu shot for as, as long as I can, anyone could remember from his whole life. And uh, whenever a flu shot was available, he would go get it. Um, he ate healthy. Oh, I shouldn't say ate healthy. He ate fat-free. Uh, because he had a heart bypass and he was just paranoid about his arteries clogging up. Now, this is not my topic, but it's a side note. Please do research on that. I research cholesterol and it has nothing to do with fats. It has to do with carbohydrates and sugars that destroy the arteries. So I know that's very controversial, and uh, but please do your research. I've done mine and... Anyway, to make a long story short, um, the reason I tell you that is because it's part of the story. Okay, let me get the other color that I need here. And I think it's this one. Nope. That. Okay, and he, um, he developed Alzheimer's, and he was uh, in a program at the University of California at Davis, California. And one of the things they asked his wife and him was how many flu shots he had received in his lifetime. Was he getting them regularly? And yes, he did. And he took them his whole life. And um, then um, his diet was his diet fat-free? And yes, it was extremely fat-free. Extremely. There was not one drop of fat that he ever consumed after his heart bypass. Well, in the end of this study, they said to his wife that they are linking the flu shot with Alzheimer's and also a low-fat diet with Alzheimer's because the brain is needs healthy fat to function and maintain health. And when he got Alzheimer's, he went downhill rapidly because there was no fat in his diet. I mean, rapidly. And that's just my some of my information that I have received and seen and looked into. There's much, much more on the internet, so I encourage you to take a look at that. I'm trying to eat food that is as close to nature as possible, like real butter, real cream, not refined foods, but whole foods. And I guess that's my philosophy. And I know there's a lot of different opinions, and you can find a study <clears throat> to back up what you feel. Um, but you have to look at these studies and really analyze who did them and who funded it before you can believe every study out there. Many of the studies are funded by pharmaceutical corporations and they have a vested interest, which is not always for the interest of the patient or the public. Okay, I better be quiet because that's controversial too. I don't like controversy on my channel. This is a no um, drama zone, but I just felt like I had to say that today. And I just encourage you to do your own research. It takes Google. I mean, we've got Google at our fingertips. 
when I grew up, we didn't have that on the internet. We had to go to a library and depend on outdated books. And now we can tune in to the latest information just by our computers. And I think the technology is just awesome. Oh, I hope I haven't been getting off camera. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Okay, folks, I think for today, that's all I'm going to do. And I instead of making part three, it's boring because it's going to be the same type coloring. I'm not going to be doing anything different. And you can finish yours at home. You've seen my technique, straight coloring with gel pen, straight coloring with Crayola, and then blending it out with a non-toxic solvent. So, I just want to thank you for joining me in coloring today. I wish you could see the beautiful light and dark violet in there, but it is like that on camera, sorry. And until we meet again, I would say happy coloring.